from Manchester. Yes, we are back and we have loads in today's show. Loads. We're talking soaps with Hayley Cartwright. Oh, there's so much going on. He's so bland. So many answered questions. I demand answers. Well, do not worry because I think Hayley is going to be able to give them all to you. She ain't giving nothing to me, I tell you. Our guests today include travel company Pride Breaks and the former Lord Mayor of Manchester, Carl Austin Behan. Yes, he is here today to talk about the Queen Bee Project. I can't believe there's a hundred statues of me dotted all over Manchester. Such an honour! No, what? Queen Bees? Yes, that's what I said. A hundred statues of me dotted all over Manchester. Oh dear, so, so wrong. Buzz, buzz, it's that kind of bee, you know? Besides, I thought you were a duchess. Oh my god, I just got relegated online. <laughs> and also, you're not really six foot, are you? Not only relegated, now I've been shortlisted. <laughs> what can I say? Anyway, we have got our Colin here today. He's talking about the Commonwealth Games. And of course, we have all the news from our Lydia. We do. It's going to be good. Plus, today our Jeffrey's teaching us about wing liner and guy liner. Strangely enough, both interests of mine. And are you having problems with your Amazon Echo? Amazon Echo, Echo, Echo. Oh, go again. How do I put up with him? What are you doing now? I'm being an Amazon Echo. <laughs> oh dear. Do you know what? It's a really good job that Dan Westwood is talking about these spooky goings on with the voice assisted devices. You'll learn something. All this and more tonight on your Manchester. I'm very excited about this next item because you know who's back with us. Ooh. Dan. Look Dan the that. man. He's there and everything. How are you doing, guys, we all right? You're yeah. looking fabulous. Thank you very much. Not so bad yourself. Oh, well, you I know, too. obviously. Right, well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm yes. pretty lazy yes. um, with gadgets and things like that. Anything for an easier life. So this week I'm looking at the Amazon Echo, which oh. the guys at home would know as an Alexa. Have you got one yourself? Oh no. No? no. no. Not, not that rich. Well, I had to be out pricey, yeah. <laughs> I had a little look into this. So for those at home, if you've got one, yes, it is called the Alexa. That's the command voice that you use. So it streams music. It's roughly the size of a wine bottle, Belinda. There you go. Thank you. Voice activated assisted speaker, if we're going to get technical about it. Um, it does a lot of things, but the main thing, you can help voice commands, so it recon recognises your voice. Uh -huh. So Belinda, I know you like a little song when you come into a room, yeah. so if you want a specific song, you can activate that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ask it, Alexa, play yeah. Dancing Queen, Lovely. Apple, for instance. Uh, and Michelle, she's a dab hand in the kitchen, aren't you? Oh, she yeah. She does like a bit of a salmon wellington. Oh, and you I can do. voice activate that as well to help with your cooking, so you can set timer, cooker, 25 minutes, etc. I thought it was going to make it. I was all dead excited. I thought you were going to buy it. I'll tell you what, you've done as a VT though, haven't you? I have, yeah. I had a little look in the city. Let's, Let's have a look, look at that. Then. It, yeah. How much do you actually speak to your phone? If like me, probably never. The whole process is pretty painful. You hold down the button, speak carefully into the microphone and wait. And then either try again when it fails to understand you, or you give up when it gives you a random response. Voice assistants have been on our phones for years, but they haven't really taken off. They're unreliable and not much quicker than typing in real life. It's a long way from the future that Star Trek once promised us. Sorry, Siri. And now we take a look at the Amazon Echo. It's a wireless speaker, you can stream music and the radio and so on. You can wake up Echo by saying Alexa. This is the name of the Amazon Virtual Assistant. You can also change this to Echo or Amazon. The blue light means it's ready for command. Setting up the Echo is a doddle. The box contains the Echo itself, a power cable and a tiny instruction manual. It's really simple to get going, you download the Amazon Alexa app. Some BT Home Hub users have experienced problems, but don't worry, there's a little solution online. But is this the case, as many customers have experienced spooky going-ons with their Alexa? The online retailer got in touch and they're working to fix this problem. You guys at home got in touch too and you sent me lots of hilarious tweets. Sierra Quinn got in touch on Twitter, at Sierra Quinn. Amanda and I were sitting in the room just talking and whatnot and my Amazon Alexa started laughing. She's scared. Gavin Hightower also got in touch and he's got a problem. He's lying in bed about to fall asleep when Alexa on my Amazon Echo Dot lets out a very loud and creepy laugh. There's a good chance I might get murdered tonight. Hopefully not, Gavin. And at Mandy Moo dropped me a line as well. She said, hey, Amazon Echo, is there a reason Alexa has been laughing randomly? 
is this how it all begins? Do you have the instructions for what to do when my Echo tries to take over the world? And finally guys, if you're having problems at home with your Alexa, get in touch. We want to hear from you. So there you have it, the good and the bad of the Amazon Echo. Don't forget I'll be here with all your gadget dilemmas. Is your Dyson in danger or are you in a mix up with your MacBook? Get in touch at yourmanchester.com. So, it's now time to talk about the soaps, and therefore we are joined by our gorgeous Hayley Cartwright. How are you? I'm alright, how are you two? Well, Beautiful. we are very excited because we want to know what's going on in soap world. There's so much going on, isn't there? Which soaps are you going to talk about today? We're going to start off over the Pennines today, and we're going to talk about Emma Dale first. Oh, right, all. okay. Because, I don't know if you noticed, but I bet you a lot of our old Brookside fans noticed that Stephen Donald, who used to play Carl Banks, was mm. in Emmerdale last night. Oh, see, oh. they do that a lot, don't they, now? They kind of yeah, swap yeah. around. Yeah, he was in it a few years ago as well. He was playing a really nasty person a few years ago, but last night he was a policeman in it. Absolutely brilliant. He's always fantastic. And it was directed by one of my really good friends, brilliant director, Mickey Jones, as well. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also, um, I'm friends with um, Sue Twist, who actually played... Steve's mum in Brookside because she no. was Rosie Banks but I know him separately as well which is lovely isn't it and I know, I know Steve from London and I know Sue from up here and I think God, you know everybody don't I you? Know. Why do you think you've got me in? Wow. I mean honestly. It's amazing how many people think, you know. Do you know what I think last year yeah. it was they hadn't seen each other those two for 20 years and I managed to set them both up and they both met and they were just so oh, I bet excited you were chuffed, and lovely. Yeah. I was chuffed and they were chuffed as well and they were like oh my gosh oh, Oh, oh brilliant. Well, you know what? It's all kicking off in the Dales because yes. I know Lauren's had a bit of a time of it, hasn't she? She's been struggling, actually, um, mm. with the grief. Um, it's been about a year now since Ashley's death. So and I can't believe year. that. Never. Mm. It's been about a year, so, yeah, that's all gone Wasn't on, she getting so. on with the guy that runs the shop, though, the cafe? Yes. Yeah. Wasn't she yes. getting on with yeah. him the other day? Yeah. yeah. It's always the quiet yeah. ones. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, them with the quiz. Say, yes. Is that right? <laughs> Well, I will also want to move on to Corrie. Yes, well, of course you would, wouldn't you? Being a recurring actress in it. I am, kind yes. of. Yes, I am, I am classes recurring, Ooh. I guess, now. Hopefully we'll be back again this year. Yeah, you know, well, fingers, yeah. fingers crossed. Because, well, I want to talk about Corrie because I want to... It's a really interesting storyline at the moment with mm. David Platt, you know, mm -hmm. the rape of yeah. David. And yeah. I think it's really important because, you know, male rape... It's not very often shown and discussed in dramas on television. And I think it's really important. And they're doing it so well, as Corey do, you mm -hmm. know. And, and Jack, who plays David, is, is just absolutely wonderful at well, it. Well, we saw it when he, he, Kylie, with the whole murder of Kylie. And he yeah. really came into his own, didn't he? It's very powerful scenes. And, and, and I do very believe, so. I've heard on the grapevine, that David is going to turn nasty through this. And... Do we get Bad David the back? Cards. I think Bad so. David's he, he's actually back. put um, Gary in hospital on Yeah, he had a boxing match, didn't he? Oh, yeah. I missed about, that yeah. one. Well, he weren't supposed to be in the ring because he's got epilepsy, hasn't he? But he actually forced himself in the ring oh. and he's knocked Gary out completely and his Gary's in hospital. So obviously that's all kicking off. Yeah. And then the last thing we saw on Monday was um, he was in the police station. Sarah Louise interviewed. looking... Not very happy not about very it, happy. is she? Not very she'll happy. be torn, and of course, Gail's going to be torn totally, isn't she? Absolutely, she'll be torn Gosh. as well. And Do you know, it's going to be really hard work when it gets to the SOAP Awards, and mm. when's that coming up now? It normally goes out in June. Um, but you can vote, actually, I do have to say. You can go online, and if you Google SOAP Awards, you can vote. And you can vote for, it's a long list at the moment, so you can vote for your favourite actor and your favourite actress and your favourite soap at the moment. And then all the other subcategories will come in nearer the time as well. But I do think, course. like, the storylines, that's going to be a real whammy this year because there's Very lots so. of good storylines that we've had in those soaps. Honestly, there? absolutely wonderful. I mean, you think about Pat Phelan's storyline as well. Pat, I mean, Connery plays in. My gosh, is he a lovely man. Well, it's all going on, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's basically, there's just that much going on in the soaps. People should watch them, and I'm sure people will. Absolutely. They? But you will come back next week, because we need I to talk will. about Hollyoaks, and we also need to talk about... Maybe EastEnders? Oh, I do. Everyone wants the Duff Duffs. We do. Thank you very much, Hale. You're welcome, See you dear. See Thank ya. you. Well now, here's the news with our gorgeous Lydia. Hello, I'm Lydia burns Myrillo, and this is your Manchester News. The news you might not have heard anywhere else. One for you first, Belinda. I think you'll really appreciate it. A gin vending machine 
dispensing free g and will come to Manchester this weekend. The gin craze, which has swept the country in recent years, comes to a head on the 16th and 17th of April with a token operated gin and tonic dispenser in Barton Arcade. Brewdog's Lone Wolf Distillery is installing the vending machine in as an homage to the secret gin slots of the 18th century where customers could pass coins through a slot in exchange for a dram to hide their drinking from the police. Next, great news for commuters travelling between Manchester and Liverpool as train journey times will be slashed from next month. Due to route and timetable changes, all Trans Pennine trains travelling between Manchester and Liverpool will now take 35 minutes. That's 17 minutes less than before from the 20th of May and the express service from Victoria will run every 30 minutes rather than hourly. A fundraiser for looked after children, uh, a charity called Care Afloat, takes place on the 20th of April at Bar Pop. The event, the brainchild of Jackie Love and Gareth C. Neal, is set to be a stunning night of fun, drag and live music taking over two floors of Bar Pop. So the event is taking place on the 20th of April at 7.30pm Finally, a 12-year-old girl who was injured in the 2017 bomb has been invited to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding next month. Amelia Thompson from Sheffield was allocated a pair of tickets and she's actually given the second ticket to the mother of Olivia Campbell Hardy, the Greater Manchester teen who sadly died in the, the terrorist attack. Now, her mum was quite happy for, to, for her to do this, to give the ticket away. She said it just feels right, it just feels like the right thing to do. Sharon's looking forward to it and that's what matters. That's the news for this week. I've been Lydia and you guys have been amazing. Well, next up is Chris, Head of Operations for Pride Breaks. Chris created Pride Breaks with purpose to provide diversity, to provide unity. And to allow people like me within the LGBT community to build new relationships through travel. Yes, well, hello and welcome, hello. Chris. thanks for having me. So tell us about it then. What is Pride Breaks? So um, we created Pride Breaks around eight months ago um, with an idea to bring people within the LGBT community, um, bringing them together and taking them to places that you know they may not have travelled before. I think nowadays there's a lot of stipulation with in the travel industry, particularly within the LGBT community, that you can't travel safely. Mm -hmm. um, and what we want to do is bring to our passengers that you know you can travel in groups safely. Um, you know there are places outside of the UK such as Amsterdam Pride. Um, that you can travel to and obviously it's all about meeting people within the community. As so well. is it just the prides that you concentrate on? For now, yes. Um, I think it tends to be a very seasonal thing that people will save up over the, over the course of the year and then summer they'll spend a little bit more money. Mm -hmm. And is it something as well that, you know, if you're on your own as a solo traveller, is this probably a good idea where you can meet up with groups of people? Absolutely. So 50% uh, of the people that are signed up on the trip already are solo people. Um, not in relationships, they just want to go, have fun, meet new people and get, you know, a little bit of culture. So a bit of a Lonely Hearts Club. Yes. Aww. Yeah, and, and in terms of like the reaction, has it been really positive? Because I imagine that, that there has been a need for this, hasn't there? Yeah, and I think it's, I think a lot of people are still trying to grasp what it is that we do because it's so new. Um, the businesses within Manchester have been amazing, um, Canal Street Media have been brilliant, LGBT Foundation to provide you know, links and, and services to people. Um, the LGBT Foundation are actually pushing our services to people who've been in long-term relationships and have, have, have finished. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, they don't have friendships within the community. Um, but as well, people that are struggling to come out or family life's a little bit difficult for them, for them to surround themselves with people that have been through the exact same is, is something that will be great for them. So it, it just focuses on the LGBTQI plus community and yeah. it brings them a, a lovely time, a lovely holiday. What do some of the holiday? What some of the stuff they can get up to on these holidays? So um, Amsterdam Pride has a massive canal parade. Um, obviously, it's a little bit in Manchester, different in Manchester. Yes. Um, so there's over 70 boats that will come down the canals, um, and you know there'll be parades, music, and um, and then of course you can jump onto one of the trips that we do. So you can go to the Heineken Experience. Um, you go to the Red Light District if you're feeling mm. a bit cheeky. <laughs> Um, I should imagine people will do being in Amsterdam. It's kind of what's expected, isn't it? You are always cheeky. I'm always feeling cheeky. Yes, I'm drawn to a red light. I don't know what that's all about, to be honest with you. When in Amsterdam, but um, but yeah, it is a really great kind of experience for people who who don't really have big relationships within the community. To now, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Mm. Top tips for travelling. Have you got any top tips? Be a bit of a tourist. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking selfies. People get a little bit cringy, but 
I say go for it. Yeah. Mm. Look at the fun things to do. Um, and, and particularly with our trip, just throw yourself in. You're going to be on a coach, you're going to be on a ferry with people that you've never met and people of different groups that you've never thought to, to kind of engage with. Just go for it and have fun. And how do people find your site then? Fun, colourful, yeah. um, that's pretty much what we're about. Um, and I think it, it gives a kind of an introduction of what it is and what, what we're doing. And what's the ultimate goal for you? To, we, we want to hear back at the end of the summer, you know, people's stories on, you know, what they got up to, the new friendship groups that they made, if, if, if we can get that, you know, even 30 people to even say the new friendships that have been made, my, my job's done there. Fantastic. And you are online then, so is that where people go to yourself? And what's your website? So our website's pridebreaks.com. Um, you can book solo if you want to, or you can do group bookings if you want to take a rent. Oh. Sounds good. I don't know where you're going to be going this summer. I, well, it gives me something to do, doesn't it? I tell you, it's either that or skiing or working these days. It's all very, very busy. But I might give them a go, you know. Come for it. I should do, shouldn't I? I should get, bring a little group of it together. Get some out of my hair. <laughs> might bring you along for the fun as well. Oh, I think dear. you'd enjoy well, that. What? Yeah. Bell and Shell hit the road <laughs> running, eh? Oh, I can Life's see that now. Absolutely. It sounds fabulous. Well, thanks very much for thanks coming for in. Me. Thank you. Oh, cheers, Chris. Cheers. And welcome back to your weekly makeup fix for you makeup addicts out there. Today we're going to talk about all things eyeliner. We're going to be covering your tricks and tips on how to get the perfect wing eyeliner and for you gents out there I'll be covering guy liner. My go-to eyeliner product is a gel liner. You can pick up a Maybelline gel liner from Superdrug for about nine quid or for people who like the high-end products a little bit more you can go in with the other mask position liner and that's about 21 quid and you can get that from Selfridges so we're just gonna pick up some of the product on your eyeliner brush you can either use a angled brush or a eyeliner brush like this one I'm just gonna pop it on the back of my hand warm the product up first and get it on both sides of the brush then I need you to look straight ahead just look at me, open eyes. I like to do my wing liner with open eyes so then you can see where your crease sits because sometimes when you put your wing liner, you can lose the wing itself. So I'm just gonna map it up. And I like to follow the lower lash line and then bring it up towards the brow bone. And you usually wanna line it up with your lower lash line. If you make mistakes, it's okay. <laughs> because you can clean that up with concealer later. So you want to draw this line first, the, ba the back of the wing, and following the lower lash line, and then from the top, you got to bring it, and I'm going to get you to close your eyes now, and then you just got to drag it down. And then you go from the inner corner and join that line up. So you should get a line, a uh, shape like this. Now you just got to fill in the rest of the liner, making sure you get all the way to the lash line, because then when you apply eyelashes you don't want to see your lids. Then you can go in with a black eyeshadow and a flat brush and just set that gel liner so that it doesn't move or crease and doesn't catch onto any of your eye other eyeshadows that you have on your lid. And then for your lower lash line you can go in with your a pencil liner, I go in with a MAC cold, uh, cold pencil and you're just going to run this on the waterline all the way. You want to join the lower lash line to that wing now and then you can set that again with some eyeshadow, black eyeshadow and if you want to smoke it out a little bit more, you can just bring that black eyeshadow down a little bit and then you want to join that lower lash line to the wing as well. So then it's a complete look. Don't worry gents, I've got you covered. We're moving on to guy liner now. You're gonna take your MAC cold pencil again. You're just gonna go in, you're gonna pull down your lower lash line. You go in. Just line that water line. Gents, I'd avoid doing the top, your upper lash line, just cause then it would just take it more into the draggy side or more feminine side. If you'd like to, go for it. If you did want to, you could probably just get that black shadow and then just run it on the outside again, just like this. 
and then it just give you a fuller lash. So bringing us the action from the sport this week, we have the lovely Colin. Now you're wearing blue. Do I take that as you were very sad at the weekend? Um, slightly, yes, just slightly. I've got to admit that my preference is blue rather than red. <gasps> See, but I what, liked what him. What are we talking about? Well, we're talking football. Football? Football, yeah. Oh, the and derby. And it was the derby on Saturday. Yes. It was all there, Clash of the Titans. Mm -hmm. City versus United, first versus second. And how did well, it pan out? Well, victory for City. Oh. They win the championship, you see. Win it, Premier League, champions. United needed the victory, obviously, to keep that second place. Mm -hmm. Well, at half-time, Vinny had scored. And then uh, the other chap, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> I'm not such a good sportsman. Uh, but City are leading 2-0 at half-time, mm. and champagne's on ice, and this, that, and the other. Mm. And the tide turned. I know. It was all tense in our household, mm -hmm. because we, we are Reds through and through. Yeah. Dare I say it? And then... It was Faces were just yeah. a bit like down. Mm -hmm. And then Pogba. Yeah, two goals from Pogba. Yeah. One from Chris Smalling and mm. a fantastic save by David De Gea. 3 2 to United. Oh. I mean, for all the City fans out there, don't lose heart. We're one win away from winning. You know, and that goes out especially to my son, Nick, who will be a little bit upset. I think it goes out to Pep as well. Let's well, be honest. Well, yeah, Pep entitled to it, but, you yeah. know, Pep and all the other City supporters, because, well, it's a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving on quickly, uh, just a quick update on the uh, Commonwealth Games. Oh, yeah, We're not yes. doing too bad, are we? Yeah, we're we uh, currently oh, second in the table. Yes. Yes, you know, yes. Like India below us and Australia below uh -huh. us. Uh, the Scots are doing well, and the Welsh, they're seventh and eighth. Bad. The Irish, uh, 19th, but the one I like, the Island Man, 20th. They've got a medal, so, oh, you know, yeah. a bit of home nation stuff from the Royal West. Absolutely, we've been doing really good in the swimming as well, haven't we? Adam Peaty has played a absolutely blinder. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant getting yeah. out of the medal then. So. No, I'm hoping yeah. that he wins Sports Personality of the Year this year, because he totally deserves it. Well, he should, it. shouldn't he? Yeah. yeah, definitely yeah, should. Good, yeah. And for me, Sports of the Week this week. Yes. Tennis. <gasps> right. Oh. It came about, really, because of Lydia last week, mm -hmm. when she came, uh, gave us a link about Stockport. Well, Britain's greatest tennis player of the 20th century, Mr. Fred Perry, happened to be born in Stockport. Fred Perry? Yeah, yeah Fred Perry. I thought it was He's, a t-shirt. Uh, so do an awful lot of people. Oh. Yeah, I grew up thinking it was a sports label. But no, he's actually a genuine chap. Uh, came from Stockport, well, uh, born in Stockport. Mm. And uh, in 1929, he won the World Table Tennis Championship. And then he focused on tennis, and that was his first year qualifying for winning. Yeah, back in the days when the rackets were wooden. Well, yeah. Proper. Yeah, proper absolutely. Uh, he managed to win eight uh, titles uh, and Grand Slam titles, and what have you. And he became a bit of a celebrity, you know, within his own right. So in 1938, he moved over to a, um, over to America, became a citizen of the US of A. Um, during the war, he was drafted into uh, the RAF. Sorry, not the RAF, the American Air Force, should ah. I say. And he just sort of like. It, it just kept a good lifestyle over there. Oh, fantastic. And it yeah. all started off all started in good old Stockport. Stockport. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Thank you very much then, Colin. We've got to wrap it up because we're struck for time. Oh, it's oh. all right. The other four pages will wait until the time. <laughs> we will. What are you going to do with us next week? Oh, it's a toss-up. Do you have to fancy a bit of sailing? Or would you like a little bit of a question? A question. I like a bit of a question. Oh, I like a, a question. Bit of a question. Yeah, yeah. that's all my friends. Yeah. yeah. And I'll have a look Can at we that. throw a bit of dressage in as well? I'm, I'll try, <laughs> yeah, because I like these weekly challenges. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're on. Cheers, Colin. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Well, thank you, Titters. Our final guest has had many honours bestowed on him. Yes, but many of you will know him as the former Lord Mayor of Manchester. So please welcome Carl Austin Beham. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? I'm very good. You're looking very smart thank in you your nice much. Manchester Bee. Top. A little bit of a campness, bit of a... Yes. I should be there. But everyone seems to be going crazy for the bees in Manchester at the moment. Why, why is that, yeah, do you think? Yeah, we've got... Um, Big, a big air parade coming up called Bee in the City, mm -hmm. um, and it's basically six foot bees, uh, by, and they're being decorated uh, throughout. Do you remember the cow parade we did a few years ago? Yes. yes. Cow parade. It's very similar to that. So what they've done is there's roughly um, 95 uh, six foot bees that are being decorated by various artists, designed by various people, 
and what it is it's a massive way of raising money for charity because what happens is we've got two main sort of major sponsors and then these other sort of businesses can then buy into it and then sort of sponsor one of the bees for a company to sort of get involved with and get behind and then between July right the way through till September they're going to be on a, a trail that's going to be on a map that people can go through they can sort of find out something a little bit about the bee what, what relevance it is to either the business or the person that sponsored it or the community that right. sounds absolutely fantastic but I know that you're involved uh, on a personal level to this because you're trying to raise some money aren't you for specifically community bees yeah because what I found out um, quite late on in the process was that there was going to be 10 community bees that basically if the community can get someone to support it and fund it then they can choose where the bee goes, what the, what the relevance of the bee is um, and at the end of it they get to retain it so rather than quite a, a lot of the big sponsorship deals where you're talking like £25,000 mm. or £7,000 the, the community ones can be for, they can get for £4,000 um, and it sort of stays within that community so what I've done is I've tried to do it a little bit differently because I wanted the uh, Manchester's gay village and the LGBT community to get involved um, I thought I, you know, it's going to be very difficult to get that amount of money from one particular owner or one particular um, sort of supporter. But also, I didn't really want it just to be sort of like one brand to sort of take over a bee if we can have it in the village, in the heart of like Sackville Gardens, in the heart of the village. Mm -hmm. So, what I did then was I looked at it and I thought, right, if we can get four or five sponsors paying £500, then we get 10 or 12 partners paying £250, um, and then try and get sort of quite a lot of smaller donations of say £50 where either individuals sponsor it or they can sort of put it in memory of someone because then that's one thing that a lot of people within the village have always said that we need somewhere where you know we've got the we've got the uh, the age memorial um, we've got the uh, memorial for the transgender but we've not got something just for for people who may have just lost someone or in memory of someone over mm -hmm. the years so I think it's a nice easy way because I think there's a lot of other things we can do in the village to, to remember people but I think it's a nice easy way and a good way of starting something up that we can build on that. Mm. So basically what we've got to do is we've got two big plinths at the side at the bottom of the V. So we'll get the sponsors who've paid the £500, their names will go on there. And then at the bottom of the shape of the V, I don't know if you've, you've seen the V at all, what does right. V look like? We'll do some colouring later. We will. Yeah, I it. yeah, like, it's like a colouring book. This, this is what we're going to send out to the, uh, the, the people who are going to put in for, for a bit to design it. So what I want to do here is like put little honeycombs, but have bigger honeycombs for the people who've paid the 250 and then smaller ones as we go through. It's a great idea. But then what I also want to do, because I've realised that there's a lot of um, charities and organisations within the LGBT community that don't have that sort of money or the resources. So everyone who pays the 250 will automatically get the the um, one of the smaller um, honeycombs as well to, to donate to uh, or in memory of one of the other uh, charities. So me as a company, we, we've done it, and then what we're also going to do is we're then going to put one of the smaller ones to the Manchester Parents Group. So it just means that we've got full recognition on, on this bee that we'll be part of the parade that will sort of generate an interest within the community. And what happens yeah. after the parade then? Well, after the parade, the majority of the, oh well, all 85 of the other ones will go up for auction and they get auctioned off and then the money then that's raised goes to the Lord Mayor's Charity Fund, which is to help across the whole of Manchester uh, with different groups and communities but the community ones get to stay within the community um, and try and, and it, it's a part of the legacy of what the bee was about and why communities feel it's important to get behind it. That is absolutely fantastic and I know that this community bee is really important to you and people can still donate. I had a bit of a look at your site on yep. GoFundMe mm. and you still need a few more donators to get you to that point. Is it 6,000 you're trying well, to raise? Well, I'm trying to raise 6,500 but what I've realised is we'll probably need over a period of about three years probably another £1,500 just to maintain it, just to make and sure And how do people um, find out about doing this? Well, I've got, I've set up a Facebook page, mm -hmm. so it's, L so you can just Facebook, it's LGBTQ plus hashtag Queen Bee, so mm -hmm. I thought we'll go with the Queen Bee, obviously. Um, they can find it on my Facebook page, which is just Carlos De Bean. Yeah. Or they can just go on the go, go fund me and be in the city. So lots I'm of ways the, to find it. Though. Yeah, because I think I'm one of the very few um, go fund me with the bees. I think a lot of people have already had the sponsorship put in there. All right. Well, thank you very much, yeah. Carl. Thank, thank you very much. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. It'll be fantastic. Oh, oh. quick, quick plug there. Though. Yes. If we've got anyone that's interested in doing the design, because yeah. you know, I want, I, I really want the artist and the designer and the people that actually are part of it. I've got basic ideas for the honeycomb. 
but to get full recognition of our community, if there's any designers or any artists or any painters out there that want to get a part of it, get in touch with me as well. Excellent. Fab, Thank fabulous. you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. that's it the end of another show thank you so much for watching yes thank you very very much it means very very much to me next week of course we have got another jam-packed show for you yes we are going to be meeting a company that promises to change how people think about homelessness and the jobs they could now undertake that's right felix opus are in the building next week also next week we've got david allwood he's currently part of the Miss Saigon cast. Oh, I love that show. And all this plus soaps from Hayley and so much more. Yes, indeed. We hope to see you all next week. So please subscribe and tell everybody else to subscribe. And in the meantime, take care. Ta-ra, flowers.